You are listening to the Scars and Guitars podcast series. My name's Andrew Mackay-Smith, and the interview subject I have coming up for you is Chris Taylor-Brown from The Outfit Trapped. The reason for the conversation is to promote their July 2017 Australian tour. I'll read out some dates. On the 4th of July, they're playing Perth. On the 5th, they're playing Adelaide. The 6th, Melbourne, you've got a show. The 7th, they're playing in Sydney. And finally, on the 8th of July, they've got a show at Crowbar in Brisbane. So let's have a listen to what Chris has to say. Here we go. Chris Taylor Brown, welcome to the Scars and Guitars podcast. Seven studio albums, numerous hit singles, and rather a few successful tours. When you look back on your career to date, what comes to mind? Oh man, just the fact that we can, after you know, fifteen years of all this kind of stuff, being able to. Uh, keep doing this and keep playing for bands all around the world and, you know, finding new cities and new towns to play all the time and knowing that, you know, people know your stuff all around the world is just, it's a, an amazing, you know, an amazing thing, you know, for, for that, for, for us to be blessed with that kind of opportunity and keep going. With that. Yeah, sure. it's, it's lovely, you know, it's just a, it's an amazing feeling to be independent, you know, we, we, we run our own record label, manage ourselves you know, it's there's no nobody else involved in our in our in our band and everything we do, and, and you know to be able to have that kind of freedom is awesome and amazing, and and also to still have the, the fans that uh, you know keep us going. It's an amazing thing. Yeah, good response actually, mate. So, how much of the band's success do you think can be attributed to the single from 2002, the hit Headstrong? Oh, I, you know, I think it'll be, um, um, you know, a large amount of success. You know, I mean, they, you have bands like Tool or Radiohead where they had this one massive song, you know, with the creep with Radiohead and with uh, Undertow or with the uh, you know, Sober Tool, you know, and then it's it's it brings it brings up, you know, so many fans, new people out to hear the rest of the stuff they do, you know, and um, it's it, it, it's a blessing, you know, you can't. You got to be happy that the first song that you put out there to the world was accepted by so many people, and that they were able to hear everything else that you do and, and follow your band for fifteen, you know, fourteen more years after that. So it's great. Yeah, fantastic. And talk about you for a moment. So you've been very open about the many challenges that the band has faced uh, in many of the interviews that I've read. And you also strike me as a bloke that's tried to maintain friendships and very civil relationships with former band members. So what's kept you focused and willing through so many of the challenges and hardships the band has faced? Oh, man, you know, it's, it's always the fans, you know. We, we make music. Um, you know, I've been doing music since, you know, the early teenager, you know, sitting in the front of the couch and just, uh, you know, playing songs and writing songs and you know, having, a, you know, having a beard and whatever. And uh, that's what's been my, one of my favorite things to do my whole life. And uh, to have uh, fans want to continue to see you play live and, um, and you know, be, go to your show, the buy your music and all that kind of stuff, that's what keeps the band going, you know, is, is the, yeah, the sure. fans. And if you have any more fans, then they want to probably keep going with, with music. So... As long as there's there's people that are that are enthusiastic about the band and they love the band and what the band's doing, the band can keep on going no matter what, you know. Yeah, gotcha. Yep, yep. And uh, look, I really enjoyed your interview with Jamie Jaster, and I think that was back in December of 2015. That one was broadcast, and. In that interview, um, yeah. you both covered a very broad range of topics. So I'm going to ask for your thoughts on something. Do you prefer for, in this day and age, I should ask, in 2015 or 2017, do you prefer for interviews to be broadcast as audio or do you prefer for them to be written as features? Oh, I, I think it's more fun to watch on a podcast, you know, like a thing. Or, you know, it's like, it's much better to see the people talking, you know, and, and feel the energy and, you know, what, what their mood is or, you know, it, it's much more static if you're just reading it you know just reading it and not being able to watch the people talk you know yeah no agreed yeah so um you've been in the band with bassist uh pete and i hope i pronounce his surname correctly here is it Cheryl? uh for well over 20 years yeah. now since 1995 unbelievably so 
how would you describe your relationship with Pete? Oh, man, I mean, we, we played the third grade baseball when we were eight, nine years old on the same baseball team. And my dad was, was an assistant coach on it. So me and Pete have been friends since we were little kids. So, um, you know, definitely like a brother to me um, at this point. You know, it's been so long that uh, you know, we're going to bring it down, brother. So, you know, very close relationship for sure. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. What's your relationship been like with Australian fans over the years? I, I don't think you've, you may have been to Australia, but I don't think the band's been to Australia and, and toured yet. Um, so what can fans expect from the upcoming tour as well? Yeah, we've never, we've never been here. And we've had so many fans, you know, fly out to shows in Europe or fly out to shows in the States. And, um, you know, we're just, we're just really excited to be able to bring a show to them. You know, we've had just some real hardcore uh, fans that uh, really you know our music uh, that that's wanted that have wanted us to come there so long. So, um, our, we're going to be real excited. I think that a fair I'm going to be really excited. The, the, t- the ticket sales went went crazy the first day they went online. Excellent. And, uh, and so, you know, it's going to be an amazing experience. Do you get much? Uh, do you get much mail on social media and and the like from Australian audiences? Um, yeah, um, so, you know, fans from Australia, you know, contact us all the time. You know, we do our best to, uh, just be, you know, connected with them. But, uh, nothing, nothing beats being there in person. Yeah, no, fair enough, fair enough, yeah. Just going to go back to um, a couple of the points you raised in the Jamie Jaster interview. Um, I was really, you speak very articulately, you're a smart, clearly a smart bloke, um, and you raised a few key points about oh, what's yeah. what's going on in the, uh, you know, well, the, the Crimean War uh, and Russia and the like. Mm-hmm. I know, I understand you're a musician and not a politician, yep. and but you really raised a good point, I think, in that interview that, you know, we all should really be able to have an opinion on, on these things, so I'll, I will ask you for yours. Uh how do you think things in that part of the world have evolved? Because I, I believe your wife's from, from that part of the world originally. Uh, it, uh, I'm, I'm always from, I've always been from the United States. I mean, I was born in San Francisco. I've never really lived outside of the United States. Um, but my my wife, you know, um, you know, we're getting separated now, but right at the time, she, All right, yep. she's from there. So okay, she's gotcha. from the you know the Russia area has has a uh, she has relatives in uh, Crimea area or not in Crimea but like uh, you know Eastern Ukraine area yeah she's been there many times well so, you know it's just uh, you know it's that's just another part of the world where there's other you know there's there's always factions trying to you know exert their influence over it so they can kind of run amok and get all the deals get all the business deals and get all that stuff so you know I mean. It's just it's been going. It's going. It goes on around around the world, and you know, the people get in, get in, you know, turmoil or whatever over the course of a certain country. You know, and it's mm-hmm. unfortunate for these poor countries because they just kind of get pushed and pulled <laughs> in every direction by these big world powers. And you know, and Russia's got a lot of stuff. Got a lot of oil and gas, and not even you know, not too much money. I think right now because they're a lot of sanctions on them, but yeah, you know, they're, they're trying to do what they're doing, and uh, you know, no reason for the US and Russia to be fighting or whatever. You know, our, our press just can't accept any kind of <laughs> kind of like cooperation on yeah. terrorism or anything. It's just ridiculous. So, I don't know, whatever. I like to play music, <laughs> yeah, no, you know. Good. Good point, great yeah. response, and I really appreciate you um, offering some feedback on that one there. So, uh we're now at the uh, the stage of the in- we're now at the stage of the interview uh, where I have three questions that I like to ask all of my interview subjects. So I'd love for you to humour me here and play uh-huh. along if that's okay. So your answers can be as not safe for work as you like. So here goes. Choose three words to describe yourself. Three what? Three words to describe yourself. Hello. Hello. Three can you hear me? words. Can yeah, describe myself. Okay. Yeah, I can hear. Um, let's see. Three words to describe myself. I'd say uh, eat. Let's see. I don't know. <laughs> it's hard to describe myself. <laughs> um, I think um, I think that one is misunderstood. Uh, another one is abrasive, 
and another one is uh, caring. Okay, good one. Yeah. If you could go back to when you were 18 and give yourself some advice, what do you think you'd say? Oh, wow. I'd say slow down and you don't have to get to the finish line in two years or in five years. You can take, you can take your time. Yeah, <laughs> you, don't right. have to, you don't have to reach all the heights that you've ever wanted in right away. You know, I'd say just chill out and enjoy the ride. Yep, great answer. And finally, what five guests, living or dead, would you invite to dinner? Five guests. Oh, uh, okay. Um, I'd love to have. Uh, let's see. I'd like to invite Jimmy Page over for nice. dinner and pick his brain about some stuff. Um, I would have him. I would. Let's see. I would. Oh, Joe Rogan would be another great guy that I would want to hang out with. Yeah, love his podcast, um, yeah. Yeah, he's great. Um, uh, Dave Chappelle would be a cool guy who we want to talk about. Very funny, yep. And then, uh, let's see. And maybe um, Tori Amos would be cool. Okay. And then the that. last one would be Maynard from Tool. Maynard from Tool. Say that last one again, sorry. Maynard, singer from Tool. Oh, wonderful. Okay. Gosh, yeah, that's... Mate, I might become a waiter at that one if that's okay. That sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Okay, mate. Well, that about wraps things up. Uh, really appreciate you taking the time to have a chat. Uh, yeah. And, um, mate, I'll certainly be in the audience when you guys come down to Australia. So, um, yeah, can't wait for you guys to get down here. Yeah, I can't wait. You going to be at the show? Absolutely. I will be, for sure. Yep. Awesome. Well, let's hang out. Let's have a, let's have a brew. Uh, that'd be awesome, man. I'll throw some horns up. Man. Yeah, no, that'd be great, mate. Finally, mate, you've come down do all of, you'll come down all of this way, right, so brother. we'll have to catch up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, do it. I'm down. Looking forward to it, my friend. You have been listening to the Scars and Guitars podcast series. My name is Andrew Mackay-Smith, and that interview subject was Chris Taylor-Brown from the US outfit Trapped. Thank you so much for listening.